Hello, welcome to Calls with Your Kinky Bestie. I'm Emma. I am a submissive and mentor for fellow kinksters. This podcast is all about insights into kinky life and dating, um, sharing my personal experience and stories, and help share mindset shifts too to get you into a confident space, um, more confident than you are now. So get ready. It all starts now. Okay, let's talk about this kinky dating block. And you might have a different different way you phrase this. I'm sure there's a million and one ways that this is said over and over again, but you you know this one. Anytime I ever talk to someone about kinky dating, I tend to get the answer. Well, just no one around me is really, you know, into what I'm into, or maybe, you know, the people around me are kinky, but they're not actually looking for partnership with it, or just, you know, maybe it's the other way around where the people around me, oh, they're just, you know, aren't kinky at all, but they're really great, you know, like uh, life partner materials. I just don't want to do, know what to do. And yeah, it's just this idea that there's something wrong with the single people around you. And that's why like partnership, like your dream kinky partnership isn't an option for you. And I get it because I've been there because the stuff is a little underground. Like not everyone's going to be super comfortable putting their stuff out there publicly. So it's hard to really know what's going on. Um, you do kind of have to like dig past another layer. So it's hard to really like fully see the situation for what it is. Um, but this is a really big block and it's not just you. Like many people feel this same exact way, even if they are, you know, live next door to their, their perfect partner who they're, you know, having such a great time with later on in life. But okay. So yeah, that's the big block is that, um, it's just an issue with my area and the people around me. Um, and that's why, you know, my, my lifestyle is an option for me right now. Okay. There's so many layers there. So let's dig into a little bit deeper. So I am of the mindset that like whatever it is that you do believe, like that is what you will make real for yourself every day. So if you're saying and believing and acting like no one good is in your area or, oh my gosh, (laughs) no one good, just know that whenever I say no one good, I just... (laughs) You know, that no one is a, you know, the partner that you want to have or the kinky person you want to meet or whatever. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So if you believe that no one uh, kinky and dateable uh, is available to you because of where you live, then of course that's going to be your day-to-day reality whenever you're telling yourself over and over again that's the case. Like, you're just shutting yourself off to those possibilities. So of course when you're telling yourself, uh, the people I'm meeting here every day are not an option for me, then that is just like what you're going to believe. Like that's just how our brains work <laughs> and the, <laughs> the world we live in. Cause we, you know, we make a, a lot of it is just made up and just whatever you choose it to be. Um, not all of it, but like a lot of it, really seriously, a lot of it. So, okay. If you believe every day of the week that the issue is the people around you aren't compatible partners. And at the same time, you're choosing to live and keep yourself in a situation where, you know, in your head, there aren't uh, compatible kinky partners for you. Then really what you're, you're saying and doing <laughs> is telling the world, I'm not available for my kinky partner because I'm living in an area where that's not an option for me. Which, you know, if if that's really the mindset that you're in, uh, it's really easy to just decide, well, the solution is moving. And I do believe that if you believe the issues with your area, then you do have to move because as, as long as you're believing that the people around you are not an option for you and that's the issue, um, then that's where you're going to continue to create for yourself. 
However, <laughs> maybe actually don't move because, you know, uh, think, think about the people in your life who are constant travelers. They never seem to find it where they're going. Or like maybe they'll get a little glimpse of it and get excited, but then, you know, the heartbreak just happens all over again. So, you know, <laughs> uh, what's, what's the phrase? Uh, you move everywhere, you go somewhere, and there you are. <laughs> I don't know the, the first part of the phrase, but I've got the second part right. Oh, everywhere you go, there you are. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, as long as this is a mindset issue, it's going to continue to be a mindset issue no matter where you are, as long as you're still believing those same things, that the issue is with, you know, your area or who's around you or whatever. So if you imagine what your day-to-day -day life would look like, if the opposite were true, if everyone around you was a potential uh, partner who's just bursting at the seams with like kinky, uh, capacity and excitement and just you know everyone around you is an amazing option for you and you know you could have a super loving fulfilled uh, relationship with all the amazing kinky acts you can imagine with yeah basically anyone you choose like everyone around you is is on that same plane of, as you and excited for it so it's just such a different you know state of mind to be in because when you're looking for those opportunities of course they're going to become much more obvious to you um, as your brain is like constantly seeking the validation that that belief is true and also it's going to change your behaviors too so not only are you going to you know just perceive the world around you with different eyes more optimistic eyes and just more vulnerable and like receptive to things working the way you want but also you're going to start acting like the people around you are available lovely kinky options for you and so you know that that's when you find yourself in a state of uh finding the the kinky meetups in your area going to munches because you're so excited to be in the spaces where these people are just bursting at the seams so eager to meet you um so do you see like the the energy difference there <laughs> I hope that, no, I, I, I know because those, these words are coming out of my mouth that they are meant for someone to hear. So if that is you, hi, thank you for being here, welcome. Let's keep going because I have a few more, more thoughts with this. Okay, so it's a mindset thing, number one. It's also a bit of, and I don't really, I don't know the term for this. So we do, you know, either share with me your your term you've heard for this, your term you've made up, or maybe, uh, you know, me and or my you know community of lovely people will come up with a term as we go. Um, but it's this idea that something in the future about you will be different because of something that you don't have now. <laughs> And, you know, you're just not able to, to get there where you are now. Like, it needs to be in the future that this thing is possible for you. So, you know, we do this again and again. Like, okay, well, I can't have a dog until I have a partner. And that'll be super happy because I'll have a partner and a dog. Which, by the way, I literally used to live my life that way. <laughs> like, I, you know, would have my my list of all my fantasies and I would visualize like what my life would look like with my partner and it would include living with a dog with them and so I like subconsciously was not allowing myself to get a dog or even look at that as an option until I had a partner because I just kind of viewed them being a together thing or like a thing that was only possible whenever I had a partner um but yeah by by kind of reverse engineering it and deciding that instead like no, I can have a dog now because that is what I envision my, you know, ideal lifestyle to look like. And whether or not that includes a partner now or later or whatever that is, like, I get to have a dog because I want to have a dog. And I'm willing to take the steps to, you know, take care of them and do the things. So 
Um, yeah, a lot of it is just acknowledging that that is even a block in the first place. Um, because it can be hard to see that stuff without like truly questioning it. Like, okay, so whenever you imagine your perfect, amazing, kinky, amazing life with your kinky partner, besides the partnership, like what else is actually different about that life? Do you imagine yourself in a different environment? Um, maybe having a different job, having different hobbies, being around different like communities? you know, your life probably looks totally or at least a bit different than it is now. So if you can, I highly recommend just, (laughs) you know, write that out as a prompt. Like what, what does my, besides my amazing love, okay, I have my amazing lovely kinky partner. I'm so grateful, you know, that they're in my life and as a result of them being in my life, these are all the different areas of my, you know, life that it just kind of clicked together. Um, and here's what they look like. Here's how my life is so much more different, so much more different, so much more different. Oh my gosh, it's a little late. And so I'm like questioning whether or not that's the correct grammar, but okay, let's move on. <laughs> so for me, whenever I hear the phrase, okay, the issue is with the people in my area and still, you know, you're choosing to live in that area. <laughs> And not taking steps towards either, you know, surrounding yourself by people who you think are great partners by moving to that different area or working to change your mindset around it. Um, it just is, you know, as like aspirational um, separation. <laughs> like you're deciding that this, this thing that you really want is just not an option for you for whatever reason. Um, So yeah, really getting clear on like what that reason actually is because everything in your life is controllable, um, including your thoughts. And by then changing your thoughts, the world around you changes too, which is really amazing. But, oh, it is late and I am getting a little bit lost with this. But okay, the big takeaways (laughs) are that If you believe that everyone around you sucks, of course they're going to (laughs) suck. So please just decide that everyone around you is actually lovely and amazing and see what fucking happens. Your life can turn around so fast the second that you decide your life can turn around. Um, And uh, there's just really so many things that click into place whenever you start um, acknowledging the like the personal accountability for that too, like just saying to the universe, okay, hey universe, I know I've really had a lot of feelings in the past towards the dating scene and the people around me because yeah, I've had some not great experiences and it's made me a little, a little jaded and salty. And as a result of that, that means that, you know, I'm looking at people with different eyes. Um, It's not as much kindness or, you know, willingness to learn what the the unique thing that they have to offer because, you know, I'm putting on to them expectations that, you know, I've created from, from past relationships and whatever it is. So acknowledging that you have a part in this life that you create yourself because you are the creator of your life and because of that you also get to have whatever you want so what do you want (laughs) and if you really truly believe that what you want is not available to you why (laughs) Uh, if you had to turn it back inwards like what would be the internal the internal reason If your reason couldn't be, it's the people around me. Okay, well, if you really believe that the issue is the people around you, then what does that say about you to live in in an area where, you know, you're not surrounded by people who are available partners for the lifestyle that you're wanting to lead? All right. Those are the big things I've got with this topic. I've probably got many more thoughts, so maybe stay tuned for future episodes or just follow with follow, you know, follow along with the podcast journey. 
get on my Instagram, send me a little message. Um, I really love DMs on Instagram, by the way. It's kind of one of my, my talents in this life is having, you know, text conversations with people. I'm actually considering changing my um, mentorship model a bit to go more that direction. Um, right now, currently, I'm only offering live calls where, like, you schedule a time with me and we have a video call together. Um, but what I'm noticing with that, the main issue, um, especially because I am a neurodivergent pe- person, uh, so, of course, I attract a lot of neurodivergent people, and often this issue that, you know, I face, and of course, my, my people are going to face, <laughs> my people are going to face, um, is that it's hard to, you know, just schedule, schedule your life in advance and then show up for that event you've scheduled for yourself with the same enthusiasm because there's just something about, you know, the impulsivity just wants you to find the solution right away while you have the energy and momentum to do it. So you want to just be able to do it. So um, I'm really yeah, considering uh, switching up or maybe just adding an additional offer um, for it's more of that texting model where, you know, the idea being that then you could text me whenever you've got, you know, your brain bursting with this new thing that you just want to express. And by not being on a rigid call, like then I'm also able to respond to you whenever I am in a super, uh, a place of really ready and eager to respond to that too. I think that could be really, really valuable. So in the meantime, send me lovely messages on Instagram. My handle is kinkybestie, um, spelled the same way as it is in the podcast. All the lovely links are in the show notes and stuff like that. Um, but let's keep this convo going. This is a really fun topic. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? Um, what are similar kind of blocks that you created for yourself in your dating life, uh, that are, you know, it's easy to kind of see them as external. Um, but really maybe there's something else going on below the surface. I don't know. Um, (laughs) I will see you in the next episode or over on Instagram. All right. Bye, Bessie. Thank you so much for joining me this episode. You can follow the podcast on the platform where you're listening to get updates with new episodes. You can follow me on social media at Kinky Bestie. I'm on Instagram. Um, You can also check the show notes for any links or resources that I talked about in this episode or just more ways to connect with me. And please share this with your kinky friends who could benefit from this type of content. Um, There is also an option for each podcast episode to engage with uh, Q&As or polls. So I'd love to hear from you and create future episodes around what you want to chime in with. So please check those out in the show notes too. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.